What's up everybody, Austin here. I'm sharing a portfolio update. I am generally an optimist, a bull, bullish on the market and try to be a long-term investor. Things are changing so fast right now. I'm not trying to fear monger. I'm just sharing, trying to be share transparently what I'm doing with my own money and my own portfolio. This is not financial advice. I don't recommend anybody follow me. Talk to a financial advisor before you make any financial decisions. I am not a financial advisor and I'm definitely not your financial advisor. All I'm doing is sharing what I'm doing and why I am feeling very negative and bearish about the market right now and then certain parts of the market. And I'm telling you exactly what I'm doing with it, right? Here's my portfolio. I share this journey transparently trying to build a million dollar portfolio. We're at $153,158. Uh, we have put in about $156,000. And so all in all, we are down $1,800 since February of 2000. 22 year to date we're up twenty four thousand dollars over the last week we're up uh four thousand one hundred dollars which is great okay and this is where the big change has come from my portfolio and why i feel obligated to share this because i've shared when i was long companies uh and there's been some radical changes so i am essentially shorting arc but not directly shorting by selling it short. I own SARK, which is an ETF that essentially is the inverse of ARK. So whatever ARK does, ARKK, SARK will do the opposite. There's a lot of risks associated with it. These things are not meant to be held more than just a couple of days or a short period of time, because if the momentum goes the wrong way, if it starts going negative, literally it could lose, you know, this thing is designed to lose value over time. So if you if you look at it over a period of you know six months, a year, two years, same thing with SQQQ, you're going to see them down 58%, 90%, stuff like that. These things lose value over time. They are meant to be short-term vehicles, okay? And that's how I'm using it. I know it's against everything I say about long-term investing, and I'm openly admitting this is probably a mistake and probably foolish, and something that um, right now, my mom, her investment stuff, I'm just saying, hey, mom, just stay invested in the S&P indexes and then your mix of, uh, you know, a portfolio that's relatively conservative because of your age. Like, that's what I'm telling my mom. So I'm not saying that people invested in just dollar cost averaging over the long term should panic right now and sell everything and go to cash. This is what I'm doing with this portfolio that I'm very specifically trying to grow. Um fast and take advantage of what I think is a dislocation from reality and what the market is kind of used to thinking. And I'm going to explain all of that in a second. So anyways, um, the thing I'm telling my mom though, and close friends is just, Hey, if you are invested and you're kind of planning for retirement, ratchet those expectations down for your index returns. If you own, let's just say the S and P 500, which has historically earned eight to nine percent a year on average. Ratchet those return expectations down to three to five percent for the next five or so years, and then from a, after that point, let's look, reassess, see where things are at, and then maybe that we can expect higher. But for planning purposes, lower. I think the best thing to do for people that just want to stay invested: lower your return expectations, increase your savings, try to cut costs, and be smart that way. Right. Um, that's how we deal with crisis. We don't have to panic. I'm not panicking. This is my portfolio that I am actively managing and trying to take advantage of what I think is a dislocation in the market. Okay. And then I own T, uh, TLT, which is iShares 20 year uh, treasury bonds, right? That's 25%. And SARK is 75%. Now, very, I'm going to share how this might change or what I'm going to do with this, but let me, let me just outline this, right? This is my email newsletter. It's linked in the description below, investor.beehive.com. And this is what I sent out and it explains how I'm feeling about the market. I'm also gonna go into um, what Liz Young said from SoFi about the uh, Fed March, the March statement from the Fed and then the roundup from Howard Marks and Oak Tree, which really have helped shape the way I'm feeling right now. These are very smart people. Then I'm going to share why I think the S&P 500 is overvalued, why I think there's still bubblish behavior in the market. Hello, NVIDIA. So yeah, let's get all into it. All right. This was sent out March 25th. I believe the Fed's in a tough spot with rates. They can't stop raising rates or, or lower rates until inflation has clearly subsided 
or they run the risk of hyperinflation, which would be a horrible outcome. So in the March statement this week, the Fed essentially said they plan to raise rates by 0.25% in May. And then based on the dot plot, they'd be done hiking. However, Powell said that they don't plan to cut rates in 2024. This is uh, essentially the dot plot. It shows the Fed um, members dot plot projections for the remainder of the year in 2023 and then the median, right? And it shows we're basically going to flatten out here um, at, at least right now and then probably moving forward. All right. So Powell did mention that the issues in the banking sector, everything we've seen with um, Silicon Valley Bank and other banks would cause more regulation, and tighter lending standards, which would slow down economic growth. This essentially banks tightening their standards and and not providing as much capital to people and the issues that we are potentially having with people having to restructure loans that uh, are due to be restructured or refinanced this year at much higher interest rates than what they've built their businesses off, off of puts us in a situation economically that essentially is another rate hike or will have the same effect as another rate hike or worse on dampening GDP growth in the economy. That's what could happen with the banking sector. And so if that happens and we see a major slowdown, then the Fed won't have to raise rates again and they'll actually have to stop or start cutting rates to respond to potentially some type of panic in the market or a crisis scenario, which I don't want to happen. Um, and and I'm, I'm not trying to stoke fear. The, the problem is, and I'm going to outline it right here. So there's no crazy, uh, if there's no crazy bad event between now and the Fed's meeting in May, we will get another 0.25% rate hike. I also believe we will see one to two rate cuts by the end of the year, which is generally a good thing for the stock market. And this is where I think right now the market is dislocated from the reality of what those cuts would mean. The, the market is responding as if Fed cutting rates is a catalyst and it's bullish like it has been over the past couple of years or historically when rates are being cut because as rates go down, equities get more attractive, right? The problem that I have is what happens to the stock market and the economy between now and when the Fed is forced to start cutting rates. If there's a major drop or something that causes the Fed to have to lower rates, then sure, the market could start rebounding once the rate cuts start happening. But if we're down 20 or 30% from now until then, that rebound isn't so interesting to wait for if we think the Fed is going to start cutting rates. And that's what I think is going to happen. So uh, when rates go lower, lending is cheaper for companies and owning stocks is more attractive for investors. Yep. Problem is what would have to happen to the economy in order to cause the Fed to lower rates this year because they currently don't plan to. We would either need a very negative shock, which could come from more banking system issues. I hope not. Or just weaker consuming spend, consumer spending or economic slowdown, recession, whatever. Either of these scenarios would likely cause lead in, to increased unemployment and a worse recession than what is currently expected. Earnings season starts in April, so I think that will be our first insight into this. I'm expecting earnings to be weaker and guidance to be worse than the market currently expects. So conclusion number one, there's a lot of unknowns right now. I for sure am making sure I have a savings cushion built up. I'm not taking on any loans to do big projects, and I'm putting off big purchases for the time being. Second, I believe the broader U.S. stock market is trading at too high of a P.E. multiple given our current rate environment and what I believe is on the horizon for the broader economy. The SPY is trading at 395 in a blended price of earnings of around 18. I think we're likely to see forward earnings expectations come down as the economy weakens. So a more reasonable PE would be 15 to 16. This would compensate for reduced forward earnings. So this is essentially what I laid out a bit, my bare case for the S and P 500 for the end of the year. And I hate doing these. I never do these. It's it's dumb. You're usually wrong, but I'm just very convinced right now about this situation being bad, um, but normal bad, right? I mean, 10 and 20% corrections happen all the time in the stock market. Okay. Um, and I just think we're due for one. And, and people are acting like because the market was down a little bit last year that we're not due for one. But when you look at over the past three and five years, the market's still ridiculous, especially when you consider before COVID, the economy was trending slower and, and, and the, 
I was uneasy about the economy heading into COVID and then COVID happened and everything went crazy because of the easy money and all that stuff. But if we go back to the mindset going into COVID, um, the economy wasn't looking extremely hot. And the I sensed that the market was overvalued prior to COVID. And, and so I think if we base it off of that and we, and then we're not in a bear market right now compared to 2018, 2019, which is the norm. We're still above that. Right. So anyways, my bear case 315 and a PE of 15 for the S and P 500 or the SPY would be a roughly a 20% drop from here. Base case is 346 PE of 16.5, which is about a 10% drop. And then bull case is 390, which is right where we're at. Is it possible we go higher? Sure. Um, market could do whatever, but I will not feel FOMO. I will not make the mistake of piling heavy into speculative types of stocks and stocks I think are overpriced um, if the market goes higher from here, because I think that would be a short-term incorrect response to the market just being careless and acting like things are going to be great forever and there's easy money forever. So I would be happy to sit on the sidelines if that happens. Um, all right, a quick anecdote. AI has created what I think is another wave of bubblish behavior that I just don't think is healthy. NVIDIA is an amazing company, but it's trading a blended price earnings ratio of 76 in a really tough macro environment. Happy for anyone who owns NVIDIA so far, but that is not realistic for a company as large as NVIDIA. So let me show you what I'm talking about. This is NVIDIA right here, and it's just insane. I mean, again, like, look, okay, people are saying that the stock market, we're in a bear market right now, and everybody's, there's so much fear. Well, look at NVIDIA in 2018, trading at a PE of 40, which is very high. Uh, and then they had this crypto issue where they misplanned things based on inventory because of crypto and all that stuff got crushed. And then it traded up to um, basically right, I think this is right before COVID dropped. Um, 72, which is a P of 48, right? And then COVID happened and then everybody was in love with everything. It got in, it got up to a PE of 77. Um, and, and that's the thing that like NVIDIA right now is priced at the same. This is crazy. If you don't think NVIDIA is in a bubble right now and that there's still a bubble in the market, you're, you're not, you're not being serious because NVIDIA traded up to a blended PE of 77 at the height of bubble behavior and easy money. And now, sure, the price is lower, but earnings have contracted. They over-earned, right? Look, look at this earnings growth, okay? It's it's in it, 27 cents EPS, $64, $15, $66, five, And then all of a sudden, 250 and 444. Are, like that is unsustainable growth in earnings per share. And it was, it was because of like the bubblish behavior and easy money and easy spending. Everybody be super stoked about, including me about remote work and staying at home and technology and all this stuff. Now we're down to 334, but then people are modeling it, get, getting back up to 446, 583 and 778 by 2026. Okay. So anyways, if you don't think this is priced for perfection right now in, in just a, a sign of uh, over optimism, then it. I don't think you're being realistic. It's got a PE of 74 right now. Okay. That's almost up to like the COVID high. Okay. So anyways, that's my problem with the behavior in the market right now. Um, yeah. I, I talked about this. This is just talking about lowering your expected returns. So I believe we're near the end of rate hikes. I expect weakness in the economy. I expect rate cuts this year or next. That's why I've been shorting with SQQQ and SARC. Problem with these two funds, they're only designed to be held for days. Talk about that. Chart below shows SARC and ARC over the last year. ARC's down 43% and SARC is down eight. Even though it's the inverse of ARC, that's because of the mechanics of the fund. So that's what I'm saying is like, if it takes too long or you hold it too long, even if ARC is down, SARC is gonna be down as well. But right here, you can see over the short term, so orange is ARC. Okay, you can see this is like the May, the 2022 drop for ARC. It dropped big time. And you can see from about uh, March, April, April to May of last year, you can see the insane rally in S ARC, which did actually work at the inverse of ARC. Okay, that's why I own S ARC right now. That's what I think is going to happen. But the danger is holding it too long and getting stuck in it. Or if I could be wrong and next week the stock market could go crazy, I'm going to lose a bunch of money in S ARC. Um, all right. 
the I think the better route and, and the one that um, I I don't want to say I'm going to do it because it depends if if there's a panic in the market and speculative stuff starts to get hit, which I think between now and the next Fed meeting, so the next 30 to 60 days with earnings coming in, I think we are set up for this move downward to happen in the stock market that I'm expecting. And I know how like insane and silly and overconfident sounds to say that. Like I'm literally trying to time the next two months of the market. That's dumb and it never works, but I'm doing it. That's, I mean, I'm just convinced about this. People are being reckless and um, it's a very different approach than what I've had. And I've done a lot of learning and reading and looking at how I was investing and how I just got lucky with, with being in the right place in the right time with cloud stocks when I own them in 2018 to 2020. I thought for a while that was, I was some amazing investor or whatever. Um, I mean, I, I had some insight into seeing how fast adoption was happening. Some of the, some of the growth curves, but I was ignorant to how unprofitable some of those companies were were and how they were issuing so much stock and stock-based compensation that, but that didn't matter and the market didn't care about that. And so the part of me that was right about the adoption and move to the cloud and the growth of some of these companies, sure, I give credit for that. But the part that I overlooked and was wrong about, or just didn't even see was the issues with stock-based compensation and, um, diluting shareholders the market didn't care about that and i got lucky and those stocks all went up but that doesn't mean that i made the right decision because maybe if i would have looked at them and and looked at that stock based comp and that structure it would have made more sense not to take the risk to own them even though i thought the growth was going to be there and so all that to say is i i've the market has changed. We're in a higher, that's the other thing is we're in a higher rate environment too. So I don't want to be too, I guess, too hard on myself. Um, but I, I'm just saying that I was overconfident. I think a lot of people got overconfident. We were in a zero rate environment and we're not anymore. And we're, we're in a situation where the economy is acting. People are acting like the economy's fine. And I, I think long-term the economy's fine, but short-term the economy is not fine right now. And something's got to break. Either, either the the Fed's going to keep raising rates, which would be bad for stocks, or something's going to break that forces the Fed to lower rates, and that'll eventually be good. But until then, it's just going to be bad. I mean, that's you can shut the video off now if you want to. But anyways, um, I think a safer thing to do, and I'm pretty confident about this as well. Which probably means I'm wrong is to own TLT, the 20 year treasury bond ETF, not a recommendation, introspective for myself. Um, if I think rates will come down and the economy will weaken, that's exactly the type of scenario where bonds generally do well. I spelt that wrong. Do this is my understanding of bonds. I'm no expert either. Right. Um, so take that for what it's worth. Take a look at what happens when rates go down orange line TLT performs very well. Okay. TLT is purple. Um, us long-term interest rate is orange when rates go down tlt trends up right now generally um rates rates going down on the front end happen because of a recession right so at the beginning it's like rates are going down the stock market's going down bonds are going up and so they're a better place to be eventually you want to uh begin transitioning into like back into stocks or risk assets once we're past that threshold. And, and I guess that's like the thread I'm trying to get right, right here. Um, so anyways, what happened though, was that last year in 2020 rates rose so fast, the stock market dropped a bunch and bonds dropped a bunch as well, which is, is rare that those happen in correlation the way they did uh, as fast as they did. And that's what caught a lot of people off guard with bonds to my understanding. And so, but what I think that's done is presented a very good opportunity in, in the 20 year treasury bond ETF right now. So, um, 
if I'm wrong and rates go higher, T- TLT is going to get crushed. Over last year, it's down 18% while the SPY is down 12%. This is because rates have moved so much higher over last year. Worst case scenario for TLT. Literally like the worst thing that could have happened. Um, and conclusion number four is that owning uh, SQQQ or SARC is extremely risky and not meant for long durations. If I'm bearish on the economy and think rates are coming down, TLT might be the better option. Okay, so that's how I'm thinking about it. Um, what I may end up doing this week, and again, like I will put a video out when I do this, but I'm, I'm, things are moving fast right now. And I can't promise that I'm going to put a video out before I do it and tell people what I do. I, I do share stuff in my email newsletter. The link's in the description if you want to subscribe to that. Um, but don't rely on me for anything. I'm just providing information and hopefully it's perspective to help you think through things and, and then go do more research and make your own decisions. Um, all right. So I shared, I was essentially I'm bearish on the stock market and what I plan to do. Um, and yeah, just be careful with all this stuff. And you may come back to this video and roast me because I'm wrong and everything just rallies to the sky. Right. And I'm really just letting you know what I'm doing. Right. I think the S and P 500 is overvalued, especially considering where we are with the economy. The only thing, the thing I could be wrong about is that it, it takes longer for, uh, the S and P 500 to pull back than what I'm thinking. And my timing's just off or the excitement keeps going and, and it doesn't pull back or the S and P 500 just stays flat and then earnings eventually catch up and the valuation works itself out that way. Trying to time it this way. Like there's, there's so much that could go against what I'm doing that it, it could be really foolish, but um, I think I could take advantage of this. And if, and if I could make money on, S arc or TLT and the S and P 500 drops, then I could have a lot more capital to then invest in great companies that I want to own long-term at, at more reasonable prices after some of this craziness has figured itself out. So that's what I'm trying to do. I'm not trying to stoke fear. There's taxes you got to think about with all this stuff. Most people are by far better off just like ignoring it, focusing on your life and work and dollar cost averaging into the market. And I'm falling into the trap that ruins a lot of fund managers and investors. That's a, that's a fact. Um, we'll see how it turns out.